Hello friends and welcome to day five of the Digital Detox Challenge. How is it already day five? So thank you for sticking with us. Thank you for sticking with me and I hope you have found this helpful. Now this will also be available on our YouTube channel as well as in our women's empowerment and leadership groups. So if at some point you want to go back to it, it's available for you. And, you know, I think digital detox is such an important topic that we all need to remind ourselves of a lot. At least that's how I feel that it's something that you have to practice, right? Because the digital overwhelm, the digital pinging, the digital influx can be so strong. Well, today for our last day, I wanted to talk a little bit about the concept of digital feng shui. Now, a lot of you have probably heard about feng shui or are even practicing feng shui. And basically translated, feng and shui mean wind and water. And it is really a Chinese art that harmonizes individual with their surrounding environment and what it's basically meant to do is to allow the direct and uninterrupted flow of qi which is sort of the cosmic energy current life force energy through places and structures and what it also is it's an intentional way of setting up a balanced and harmonious environment that enhances or leads to the greatest well-being and prosperity and i think that's really all we want so when we think about this as the concept of digital feng shui it is really meant to give you the most degree of balance harmony well-being and the greatest amount of energy or life force in a digital world you know um we definitely need balance or you know there is so much digital overwhelm going on that as i've discussed in the last couple of days you know it leads to burnout it leads to dissociation from self distraction and a multitude of other negative effects on your mind and our mental health and well-being so to create balance, to navigate this overwhelming digital landscape and find a sense of calm, focus, and centeredness and self is really essential to promote your inner well-being, prosperity, and harmony like Feng Shui wants to do with environments. You know, we are in a digital environment, so we're going to promote the same thing. So how do you practice digital feng shui? So, you know, one of the biggest keys to feng shui is really that idea that simplicity and simplifying um, is sort of a way to remove the clutter, a way to let the energy flow, and a way to promote your biggest well-being. And in terms of a digital component to this, you know, we've talked about some of this. It's to remove unnecessary apps. It's to sort of unsubscribing and clearing your emails, um, to close additional browsers, to not be on five apps at once or use multiple devices at once, and to have sort of digital laundry rituals and practices and also to digitally detangle, right? Like to not be overwhelmed and cluttered and so sucked in, but to detangle yourself to the simplicity of focus kind of use. And that is also number two, which is a big Feng Shui principle, which is to establish boundaries, right? Um, we've already talked about this as well, but I just wanna highlight it in a different way. Um, for example, setting your time limits for social media and then not overriding them. You know, have designated times for social media and emails. Um, you know, leaving your phones on airplane modes or somewhere else. You know, physically charging um, your phone away from the bedroom. And, you know, another principle we talked about yesterday, I believe it was, is to avoid social media use during those morning and evening times. That's a boundary, but 
because this challenge is meant to work with what you want to do, it's also really important that you decide on your own boundaries. Like in day one, we set our own intentions. So set boundaries that work with our intentions. Um, the next tip would be to really prioritize human connections. You know, we know that human connection is still one of the most meaningful things there are, right? And sometimes we crave digital connection to feel less lonely. And so whenever you have the opportunity for human connection, prioritize it. So make time and make effort um, for face-to-face -face interactions and prioritize true meaningful relationships. And then also when you are in human connection, be present, right? Like don't have dinner with a friend and at the same time be on your phone. You know, the same thing, like the role of no phones at the dinner table. It's that same thing when you have the opportunity, be present for the connection that you have. You know, the next tip for how to practice digital feng shui would be to practice mindfulness. I know mindfulness is like this overused sort of term, but really mindfulness refers to our capacity of staying present and focused. So that happens even in the digital world, right? Um, and the biggest thing about mindfulness is, is that it's like a muscle. The more you practice it, the easier it becomes. And part of being mindfulness is also this connection to self. And like, I think it was day two, we talked about this, to be present, to feel your feelings, be okay with feeling your feelings and not try to buffer them through like the quick scroll every time you feel anxious, bored, or don't fall asleep right away. Um, and then the last principle that I would want to leave you with on how to practice digital feng shui is to embrace nature. You know, we know that nature has a soothing, calming rhythm that we all kind of adhere to because we are beings of nature. And, you know, there's this underlying rhythm that our selves have and that our bodies has that we kind of can feel that nature has that's really soothing relaxing and different than that ping, 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 that drives us all crazy, right? So take breaks from devices and go outside, you know, feel the rhythm of the nature. And then, you know, also connect to not only nature's rhythm, but your own natural rhythm. So that is all I have for this digital detox challenge. I am so glad that you join me and I welcome any feedback, any comments. Um, let me know how it's going. And the goal of this is really to not be sucked into your devices and the stress and the overwhelm and the negative effects that they have, but to come back to self and also to be a more present, active, happy, centered individual in your own life. And you know, to prioritize these connections because that's what makes us feel alive. I'm sending you all the love and light in the universe.